Hello and welcome to Tech Today, or shall I say, Aloha, because I'm here in Maui, Hawaii. And we're not here to enjoy the beaches the first time. We've come to adore this sunset. What we're here for is the Snapdragon Summit as we end our tour of the United States. The new chipset has just been launched. We're going to bring you that on this show. Also, a couple of days ago, we were in Chile, Boston at the Amazon Robotics Facility. There's a Tech Today exclusive lined up for you. All that and a lot more from the world of big tech. I'm your host, Aisha Lawadi, saying, let's begin. Aloha from Hawaii. Tech Today continues their coverage from the United States. I'm here now. Next pit stop was, of course, Hawaii at the Snapdragon Summit. And of course, this is their flagship event where Qualcomm, Snapdragon, launched the latest and greatest chipset. That chipset, which will power all your premium flagship devices, Android devices in India. Most of them, Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus, they'll all be powered by that chipset. But why should I talk about it? I have the chipset with me. Now, this is sort of unusual that I am showing you this particular chipset. Now, according to Qualcomm, this new processor is going to be 35% faster when we're talking about CPU, 25% faster in terms of GPU and an AI improvement apparently of up to 435%. I think Qualcomm really means business when it comes to gaming because now you're getting capabilities for ray tracing in mobile game applications also, the chipset has Wi-Fi 7, an always sensing camera capability and dynamic spatial audio support. For me, ray tracing on a mobile phone is a really big deal. Some high-end computers, gaming laptops struggle to give you good ray tracing capabilities. When you have a PlayStation 5, you need a TV which is compatible and shows you the real technology of ray tracing, which means the way light falls in that scene, even in a game, is completely different from how we've been used to all along. We saw a couple of demos and at least the way Qualcomm claims it can be done, it looked fabulous. Let's see if these Android manufacturers can actually leverage the strength and the potential of this technology. Also, we saw a couple of interesting things where with this new chipset, translation tools in real time, multiple languages from one language to two, three, four other languages might just be possible. What does that mean maybe for the geophone? We'll have to see how these companies really synergize and collaborate. But that's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. That's just my take on it. There's, of course, the Snapdragon team that we spoke to and a very, very special person from Qualcomm who spoke to us about this new launch. On Tech Today, as always, we have a very special guest, but today, Don McGuire of Qualcomm, I have to say aloha. Aloha. <laughs> what a pleasure to have you on the show, Don. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. I want to start off by asking you, Snapdragon Summit yes. and Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Is this going to be a game changer, especially when we're talking about a world where Apple has their M2 now and their A-series bionic chips, and then, of course, you have Google with Tensor. What is Snapdragon and Qualcomm all up to? Absolutely. So HN2 already proven to be a game changer, um, just in the initial announcement that we made yesterday, as well as if you, you know, if you look at tech specs and benchmarks, we are performing outstanding, way above any competition. Some of them that you just mm -hmm. mentioned, I will not mention <laughs> them, but you mentioned them. Um, but it's really not about that. It's really about delivering on consumer and customer expectations around experiences. Um, and for H Gen 2, which is really all about smartphone experiences. It's really about making your sound quality and your audio better. It's about making your gaming experience better. It's about making your camera better. It's about making your connectivity better. So it's really about these experiential pillars and delivering all of this with AI as a common thread, right, to kind of enhance those experiences. So that's what you saw yesterday in, in, in the keynote. That's what you're seeing in our announcement about HN2. It really is a game changer. And once again, leading the industry, pushing the bar further, which is kind of what we're known for. Um, so really, really happy and looking forward to um, a bunch of amazing new devices coming out very, very soon with uh, HN2. We mentioned some competition as well, but a lot of these companies here in the U.S. are now trying to build on an ecosystem. How important now is it for Qualcomm to change this branding image, this perception of being a smartphone chip manufacturer to a connected ecosystem company? Well, it's really part, it's really important. It's part of our, eco, of our diversification strategy, right? So when you look at your smartphone, 
if you look at it at the core of the device that most people like use in their in to, to manage their life, um, but then you've got things that connect to it, right? You might have a smartwatch, you might have earbuds, um, you might look for interoperability between your phone and your car, right? As you get in and, and you transfer your applications from phone mode into car mode, that all requires interoperability. And that requires a connected ecosystem. So if you're looking Snapdragon to Snapdragon or Qualcomm to Qualcomm, we have secret sauce and lots of magic that makes that experience better. Right. Um, we talked about it a little bit in the, in the context of Snapdragon Sound yesterday right. when, when Sarah was on stage. Snapdragon Sound in the phone is great, but it's, it's also in the earbud. Right. Then there is that connectivity, that, that fabric that makes your experience both in your earbud and on the phone much better. So that connected ecosystem is very important. Um, and we're talking about more of that today. Uh, than yesterday, but um, but we've got the chops to make that happen, mm -hmm. and we have the ecosystem of partners to make that happen. We announced um, some enhanced relationship with Bose, mm -hmm. for example, that's on on the audio side. So it's it's important that people have alternatives, um, and and that uh, by the way that they have alternatives that are much better um, than than just settling for something um, that is um, either the status quo or um, or the you know the current preferred solution. It's a chilly winter here in the U.S. Maybe not here in Hawaii. Right. Of course, there's so much happening in the tech world. Layoffs galore at Twitter and Meta. As a tech leader yourself, what is your broader view on what's happening in the tech world, and what's Qualcomm's view on this as well? Sure. Uh, I mean, it is it, the macroeconomic environment is tough right now. Um, we see uh, the environment that we're in and the impact that it's having as cyclical, um, and it really comes down to supply and demand. An inventory. Um, as the pandemic set in, there was lots of people that needed to upgrade their device ecosystem to stay connected to family and friends and work and school. Um, so that drove a massive demand increase across different product categories. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't the supply to be able to handle that demand. So um, we had this supply issue. Right. Um, but as things started to ease and we started coming out of the pandemic, the supply chain issue started to ease. But also the demand started to slow, but the inflection point was missed by the value chain. So our customers continued to buy, right, because they didn't want to get caught into a supply chain issue again. But the demand curve had started to slow, so inventory started to build. And then we enter, you know, Q4 of this year, um, where you've got high levels of inventory, no supply chain issues, demand um, weakening in, in goods, demand increasing in services and travel and experiences and there's discretionary spend shift. So we have to correct this. This all has to be corrected. Inventory has to be kind of flushed through the value chain. And we think that's a couple quarters. Um, we think over, we said in our earnings call, over 50% will probably happen in this next quarter and then the rest in the subsequent quarter. And then we get to a normal supply chain balance and then we can start to grow again. And I think uh, our ecosystem starts to grow again. Our customers start to grow again. So it's about powering through, but it's also about being prudent and diligent in in this kind of environment, how do you manage spend? And how do you manage your capital and your resources so that you're in a position of strength on the other side? Um, and I think each company has to look at that differently, obviously. Um, we, are, we, are, you know, we are looking at spend, we are looking at things like travel, um, we are looking at you know, hiring uh, critical positions only, right. um, and we are looking at balancing that spend with demand and revenue right. Right. in the short term, but without taking our eye off the ball for the long term. Because you have to invest to grow so that you come out on the other side in a position of strength. We've been on the road for a while here on Tech Today, here in the United States. Of course, right now, we're enjoying a nice Maui sunset, tropical weather largely, surfer's paradise. But a couple of days ago, it was nothing like this for us. We were shooting in chilly Boston at the Amazon Robotics Facility. We had a very special guest. There was a bunch of robots. We gave you a sneak peek in the last episode. But now we want to get to the bottom of how Amazon gets you all those deliveries on the same day. How is it so efficient or is it not efficient? If so, what is the secret sauce? This is a Tech Today exclusive. I'm guessing you're going to enjoy this one. Don't miss it. Well, on Tech Today, you often see all sorts of robots and gadgets and devices and EVs and then on other days, I'm in the middle of Massachusetts here at the Amazon Robotics headquarters and I wander around aimlessly geeking it out 
and telling you all sorts of stories. But now I met an old friend <laughs> to walk me through it. Hi, Brady. It's good to see you. Good to see Welcome you. Welcome to Amazon Robotics, the hub of the robotics universe. Thank right you. Here. Thank you for welcoming us of to course. your lovely geeky home. Yeah, this is our home. What are we doing at this facility and what's happening? I mean, the vibe is really cool. I realize a lot of people are on their devices. There's robots and autonomous things robots moving everywhere. all over. This is a dream job you have. I love what I do every day. I get to work with incredible people every day, reimagining the future of fulfillment, uh, thinking about new robotic systems on how we can extend human capability, make the jobs easier for our employees, make it safer for our employees and uh, we're just starting out. Now when we're talking about all of this, I see engineers sitting in the corner and yeah. sometimes just making sure that everything, nothing is amiss. Where does the human intervention happen? Is this entirely automated? So this particular process that you see here is entirely automated where we're, we're taking the packages and placing them uh, onto the drives. We like that, right? Because what we, what we want to do is we want to avoid our uh, our employees from lifting heavy packages. Right? I want to take the repetitive motions out I want to eliminate the, the lifting of anything uh, heavy. I want to take the, the, the mundane out. So if I can elevate those tasks to a higher order focus right. for our employees, right. that allows us to be more productive. So uh, I wouldn't want, you could manually place this onto right. the drive unit, right. but now we have a, a, a robotic unit to, to do this. And that helps with our overall uh, productivity, right? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a quick pause and rewind to Ty's conversation with me in Vegas at Remars a few months ago. And that brought us this micro viral moment on this show. Let's play that out for you. <laughs> you know, when we talk about automation, the world seems to be divided into two parts. A lot of people back home and a lot of academia and academicians also say that automation is going to make, well, the world a tougher place when it comes to jobs. A lot of people will lose jobs when we're talking about robots becoming a lot more ubiquitous and a lot more adoption in that space. And then the other side talks about how this can really augment uh, what already exists. Where does Ty Brady stand on either end of that argument? I stand with our data. And our data shows that we've added more than 520,000 drive units to our fulfillment centers. And in that period, we've created more than a million new jobs, right? So the more robots, more jobs. Now, robotics has to be done right. It has to be done in a way that enables uh, human capability, that extends human reach. And this is where we focus on making our robotics easy, easier and safer uh, for our employees to use. And when done right, that else actually helps uh, create jobs. And that's what we've seen inside of Amazon. But it has to be done right. It's not a humans versus machine type of relationship, hardly. The way that we frame our relationship with machines is it's humans and machines working together yeah. to create a symphony of amazing work to be done. Right, so humans and machines working together in order to achieve the task that's ahead of you in a very natural way. Right, so our engineers, our scientists, and they are incredible. And I am blessed to be able to work with just some of the smartest people that I've ever worked with in my entire life. They've really have helped solve this really hard problem of how can we add to the tool set of our employees and so that makes it easier and safer for them to do their job. There you go, we played out the clip. Yeah where everyone was as divided with your verdict on what does automation mean, right? Does it mean that we can augment a lot of jobs here in Massachusetts, maybe in Mumbai, maybe in Bangalore? Globally. Globally, or does it mean that, hey, a lot of people will be out of employment? It is our philosophy is we want to extend human capability, allow people to do more things, allow them to do them more simply, uh, more safely and more productively, right? We want to arm them with a tool set to use any way they seem uh, possible. And if we rightly and smartly build our machines to augment and extend human capability, that allows us to be more productive. I'm going to show you, let me show you a, a very direct example of that. This is uh, a, a, a good example of the majority of our fulfillment today where we have drive units uh, carrying these pods. We're the world's first goods to person fulfillment system. Right. So what I mean by that is instead of taking a cart and going down long aisles and taking each of the objects and placing them to a cart and then bringing it back to pack right. it out. Instead, we turn that on its head and what we're doing is that we are uh, bringing the goods 
to a, an employee in order to pick or stow those items, right? So you don't have to walk as far and we can bring the right good at just at the right time in order to get that order fulfilled. So uh, here you see a station uh, where we have our associates actually do the picking or the stowing. I think it's a great example of how you can smartly bring technology in order to make the job better and easier. Ty, it's always a pleasure to always have you a on pleasure tech to today. See you too. Thank you for welcoming us to this brilliant home of yours here in Boston. We hope the next time we have this conversation, you're with us in Mumbai at the Tech that Today Studio. Awesome. And we'll geek it out out there as well. Great to see you. Great to Appreciate see you as always. It. Thank you so much. Aloha from Hawaii. Now, when we're globe trotting and bringing you the latest and greatest from the world of tech, something that comes in handy is a good pair of truly wireless earbuds. We've had a bunch of devices from the company, nothing before. And honestly, they've not been at par with some of the top devices on the show. But now, They've come with yet another mega launch and they're calling it the Nothing Ear Stick. Are they a true bang for your buck? Well, let's find out. Nothing launched its third product, the Nothing Ear Stick. And just like every other Nothing product, there's a lot of hype around this. People are saying that the Nothing Ear Sticks are not just ordinary earbuds, but a style statement in themselves. But does it mean you need to shell out 8,500 rupees for them? Or are they not really anything great? Don't worry, Tech Today has this sorted for you. From the look of it, the Nothing Ear Stick has the most unique design out there. It comes in a semi-transparent cylindrical charging case which revolves and opens like this. Very unique, isn't it? This design has made charging efficient as well. The Nothing Ear Stick lasts up to 7 hours with a full charge. It also has a quick charge feature which means if you charge it for 10 minutes, it's going to last up to 2 hours. That's very, very interesting. The only drawback of this shape is that it does not allow wireless charging. The Nothing Ear Stick comes with an open ear design, which means it's comfortable to wear it for longer durations of time, but it does not block ambient noise. Furthermore, the open ear design does not make them the best choice if you plan on working out with them. Calling using the Nothing Ear Stick is a decent experience because it has a good enough mic. Moreover, it's easy to connect this with your cell phone via the Nothing X app. Well, the Nothing Ear Stick is truly a fashion statement in itself. It has a very unique design. It's also very comfortable to wear for long durations. Moreover, it also has a good battery backup. Are the Nothing Ear Sticks worth your 8,500 rupees? Do let us know in the comment section. From Hawaiian sunsets to the latest Android chipsets, wait, that rhymed but unintentionally. And of course, what's really happening at robotics facilities in Boston? How are you getting your packages so soon? What's happening to jobs in the tech sector? And of course, we also got you the biggest from the world of tech. That culminates in this final sunset here in Hawaii. I'm going to be saying aloha from here. This is the end of our road trip here in the US. The next time I see you, we'll be back in the Tech Today studio in Mumbai. Aloha yet again, or shall I say, until next week, adios.